Hello friends, I'm Dr. Vivek and uh, today we are going to discuss uh, Dr. Samuel Johnson. Dr. Samuel Johnson uh, is a very important name in English literature and uh, the life we are going to discuss, uh, uh, not only the life, but uh, the literary in perspective to literary criticism. Uh, we'll see, we'll try to see Dr. Johnson uh, in the literary perspective, in the criticism, uh, critics perspective, we'll see uh, this. Here we are going to discuss uh, literary criticism of Dr. Samuel Johnson. So let's get started. Firstly, the life of uh, the lifespan of Dr. Samuel Johnson, uh, 1709 to 1784. This period is uh, known for its age called the New Classical Age in History of English Literature. Now, the important works uh, uh, in sense of literary criticism of Dr. Samuel Johnson. Uh, firstly, the literary criticism you find if you want to analyze critically Dr. Samuel Johnson, you can do by reading certain papers uh, in Ramla. Ramla is a periodical which is which started that was started by Dr. Samuel Johnson itself, and. Uh, Secondly, uh, his remarks on poetry. If you want to study these critical remarks, uh, uh, you can study by the writings of, uh, firstly, the three, uh, if you read three works of uh, Dr. Samuel Johnson, you will get to know about uh, Dr. Johnson's literary acumen, literary analysis. Uh, you can analyze, you can assess, you can have an idea of his literary works by reading uh, three important works. Firstly, Rasselas. Rasselas is an epilogue. Epilogue uh, is basically a brief fable, a short fable, uh, or you can say allegorical story. Uh, so he is known for Rasselas. Secondly, preface to the plays of Shakespeare. Yes, dear friend, his most famous work which he devoted eight or nine years of his life uh, uh, to the writings of the preface to the plays of Shakespeare. He thoroughly studied the plays of Shakespeare. And then uh, after that, he, he uh, wrote uh, the preface to the plays of Shakespeare. And thirdly, he is known for, critically, he's known for lives of English poets. His dear friends, uh, Lives of English Poets is known for. So these are the three critical works uh, that give you an idea of his literary acumen, literary caliber. Uh, he's also known for his uh, English dictionary. The first English dictionary in English was published in 1755 and uh, mm, that uh, he's known for and that made him famous, that made him uh, rich. He got a uh, handsome amount of money by getting it published. Now uh, he's uh, known literary, we'll discuss three points. Uh, firstly, his observation on drama, then three unities, and then thirdly, it is tragic comedies. And that uh, in this talk of mine, we will have a discussion, we'll talk, I'll talk, uh, on these uh, three aspects of Dr. Samuel Johnson. Firstly, Dr. Johnson's observation on drama, what he thinks, what have uh, his ideas, uh, what his observation on the drama. He believes that the drama species poetry of a faithful mirror of manner and life. What is drama? It's a faithful representation of manner, and of life and it's true. A story is a picture of either an individual or human nature in general. It is, if it is a false representation of picture of man of life, then it is nothing. A large play, a great play is not a story of few men in one particular age, but through them of all men in all ages. If you read a drama, that's not representing a one person or one, uh, one, one, one specific time only. 
it doesn't represent it represent all the people all the uh, uh, all the people and uh, it's for all ages it's not a particular time only it is is referred to to all ages and all people in journal so that's called a great critical work and that is the reason dr johnson finds shakespeare the great writer that is the only reason he says that dr johnson says that shakespeare represents will not happen but if it were possible if it possibly again it is the same situation comes that will happen there is a probability of happening the same uh, in uh, if it happens next time so that's why he, he said uh, uh, he, shakespeare is a great writer it effects would probably be such as he has assigned the effect would be the same if it happens next time drama therefore just representation of human nature that's why drama is called just representation of human nature now the secondly important aspect of his uh, analyzing dr johnson is three unities three unities uh, he talks about what he says about three unities he says dr johnson found only the unity of action justified by reason and he found no justifiable grounds for unity of time and place as i as you remember aristotle has given uh, three unities for drama writing for a good in poetics he says that there should be uh, three unities in a play unity of action unity of time and unity of place so uh, but he he justifies only he says dr johnson says only uh, the unity of action is justifiable other two unities are not justifiable according to aristotelian critics it is impossible to believe the action taking place in months and years and happening at a distant places to be confined for representation in 3 hours dr johnson disagrees with this and says uh says spectators are always in their senses he says he says he justifies unity of action and he condemns uh, unity of place and uh, time on the grounds the first ground he gives that <coughs> sorry that the spectators are always in their senses uh, the spectator the audience uh, who come to watch uh, drama they have their in their senses from first act to the last act uh, and uh, the stage only a stage they see a stage is only a stage and players are only players spectators know they come to hear certain number of lines recited and gestures and modulation from the first act to the last act the audience is know that stage is a stage and they come uh, they go there to hear certain lines certain modulations and uh, they knows very well it's not real it's not st stage is only a stage dr johnson says uh, when audience imagination can believe a stage to be a certain place then it can also believe that it it is another place the next moment if he, the audience is uh, uh, is imagining that it's it's a place uh, it's another place then it also can believe that uh, the another place uh, next moment it can also uh, 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 after some time he, the audience can also believe that it's not it's a, it's next time it's a next moment it's another place so they can also when they are thinking that they they are believing that is not a real uh, place at a one particular time then another particular time they also can believe that it's another place what's so wrong in it and when imagination can move so quickly from one place to another it can move across time with the same speed and if it applies to the place it can also applies to the time as well so there is no restriction there should not be a restriction of place and time in the drama so audience can move across uh, not only just 24 hours but months years etc it is a matter of suspending one's belief 
to be able to enjoy a play, suspending one's belief to enjoy a play. So uh, it's quite justifiable, it's quite right uh, that uh, he says what Dr. Johnson Johnson says, that uh, there is no compulsion of, there should not be a compulsion of uh, unity of time and place. Now, thirdly, uh, important uh, contribution of Dr. Johnson is in the reference of tragic comedies. So he says about tragic comedies, classical, neoclassical critics condense tragic comedies. Uh, they always condemn tragic comedies. Two grounds he, give, uh, he gives uh, for justifying tragic comedies. He justifies uh, tragic comedies as Shakespeare has done uh, in his works. First uh, justification he gives, life itself is a mingle of pleasure and pain. Life itself is a mingled mixture of pleasure and pain. Dr. Johnson says that critics always objected tragic comedy saying change of scene interrupts the advancement of the principal event and intrusion of comic elements may not please the audience. It might happen that uh, it, the change of uh, uh, change of from tragedy to comedy, change of scene, it interrupts and it interrupts the advancement of the principal event. And, and that may happen. And Dr. Johnson accepts this, but still justifies uh, such intrusion, such kind of intrusion from uh, comedy, uh, tragedy to comedy, uh, uh, intrusion of comic elements saying that audience being a group of diversified people will have majority to audience who would appreciate this kind of variety. There are some, there are varieties of uh, audiences uh, that may like this kind of intrusion, this kind of comic elements uh, that, uh, that it's, it can happen. Secondly, tragic comedy is uh, in account uh, comes closure to human life. And this mixture of tragic comedies comes closure to human life. Human life is more represented by the mixing of tragedies and comedies, tragic comedy. That is why Dr. Johnson appreciate tragic comedies of Shakespeare, which exhibit real state of sublunary means earthly nature and blend of good, evil, joy, and sorrows. And that's why Shakespeare has mixing this, uh, has mixed the tragic comedies on the grounds. The life itself is a mingle of uh, blend of good, evil, joy, and sorrow. So it's quite right and it's justifiable too. Now the uh, important work, uh, important contribution of Dr. Samuel Johnson in the form of lives of English poets. In the lives of English poets, uh, uh, he has given account of 52 poets from Cowley to Thomas Gray. The best written of these lives are Cowley, Dryden, Edison, Pope. In this, he criticizes metaphysical poetry. And this is the first work in which <clears throat> metaphysical word itself has been used. Uh, uh, and what he says about metaphysical, uh, metaphysical writings or metaphysical uh, what he says, uh, firstly, he uses, he's the first person who uses metaphysical. And he says, uh, uh, two heterogeneous ideas are joined by violence together. And for Dryden says, he taught man to think naturally and express forcibly. And uh, uh, for Dryden, uh, he taught man, he taught man, to think naturally and express forcefully. So he is inspired by Dryden. Commenting on Edison's, uh, Dr. Zanin Jensen comments on Edison's writing, Joseph Edison's prose style, he says, uh, the model of middle style, familiar, but not coarse. His style is middle style and uh, familiar, but not coarse and elegant, but not ostentatious not showy. So this is uh, all about uh, Dr. Samuel Johnson, the life of English poets, tragic comedies, three unities, uh, uh, the observation on drama. These are the very important uh, 
uh, points where you can uh, you can analyze Dr. Johnson, Johnson's works, how important he is, how important contribution he has given to English writing. This is all for uh, for today's talk. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much.